just in this rapid game just going to develop the knight support the pawn so we've got the four knights seems a bit basic really doesn't it just bring the bishop out like we do make space for castle in and let's castle It's all pretty simple, straightforward stuff. I think I'm just going to open up the palm. Nothing special in this game. It looks a little bit tired, actually, to me. Small piece attacking a higher piece. Let's get the bishop off the back. Let's see what the bishop wants to do. And we just bring the knight here like we do and just take the bishop off the board. So as you can see, there's nothing special going on in this game here. We're not really looking at the time. This is really like um, ignoring the clock and just focusing on the game. And at this moment in time, I've, I can hear my voice basically going, well, this looks really like it's not something we haven't seen before. I mean, we do like to challenge this poem and just see how we can open up towards the king area. But that's okay. So, yeah, I'm going to stick with going with this pawn one over here, just attacking. Don't really see any issues with that. Familiar with that ground. We're close towards the king area. Not really sure what the, the knight is attacking the queen, I suppose, in a way, isn't it? Well, let's just take it. So the knight can go, go out, so it's not going to go here, it's not going to go here because it's got nowhere to go. So simply bringing it back, maybe coming around, giving our king some company. The opponent is moving really fast though, they're moving quick, but it just looks like it's a basic quick. I mean, we could attack the pawn here just to open up more space. Kind of like the idea of the knight coming around, giving the king some company. But head of the snake, stick with that. Hit the head of the snake because the pawn is advanced up the board. Which one takes precedence? Head of the snake. Let's get rid of the advanced pawn if we can. If he leaves it, then I suppose we do take. Ah, interesting. Let's just take. Give space for the knight jumping here, maybe. See, they're moving a bit quick, really. So we do have that. Doubles a bit. Might have to work a bit to target this area. Could always bring it back again. Could push this pawn, maybe circumventing. Could push this pawn, attacking. Hmm. Which one is better? This knight is still on the edge as well.
would push the Not sure if that gives us one takes point. There's too many arrows, get them off. Push times. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the transition towards an end game position now, really, before I get caught short. It's just got these pawns here. Rhinoceros head, no. I think I don't want to ignore what's happening with these pawns and I want them to overextend if they're going to do anything. I think overextending here gives us a bit of a weakness. It felt like it was going to be good. We would have to end up bringing a rook to support the queen to put the pressure on here. It looks long term to me. I'm going to go small potatoes. That was a lot of calculating, but I think I have to wait to see if, what they're going to do. Probably expect this. So he's looking to support, but he's also got x-ray through to our king, so we have to be careful there. So we may as well just move the king, or do we move the queen? Do we move the queen in expectation, given the king company? He does have a white square bishop though, so if that bishop got there, we'd be in trouble. Knight could come here, like we said, attacking the queen this time, but he can just drop the pawn. Moving the king or bringing the queen across. Do you know, I remember a game many years ago where out when I took the game home after evaluation, all I needed to do was move the king out of the way. Um, we would have had a beautiful position, but I left my king there, did loads of attacking manoeuvres and they kept their bishop on this diagonal for ages and ages and I paid no attention to it, went on with my attack, came towards the end game and I still hadn't moved my king and they won an advantageous position just from the diagonal of their bishop. So I'm actually going to move the king. It's amazing how experiences of, you know, playing chess and some certain games just come back to, you know, to remind you of why you should do certain things. So this knight was protecting this square. His queen is there. We were always interested in jumping into this square. We've got the bishop for free, but I suppose the queen can come back and defend it. So I'm instantly just jumping into this square because the knights relinquished the power. So the queen's gone back. They are a very quick, quite quick player. We could take the bishop off the board. It is their bad bishop. Let's have a look at this. This is their bad bishop. It's stuck behind their pawn here. We have a good knight. Do we want to give up a good knight for a bad bishop? Is there anything else that we can do? Could we get the knight out? What's it doing? Can we get the queen across? Attacking the king area? Is there any meat on the bones doing any of that? Get the knight up. What's the rook doing? Rook attacking anything. There's no pawns to attack, is there, for the rooks? Push the pawn. I'm getting this knight off. I'm choosing to get this knight into the game. If need be, bring it back around again. At least we're trying to keep the company of the king. Could drop here. Swing it around, maybe get some activity working here. Hitting the bishop twice, in a sense. 
We should probably look into try and get the rook, so we might need to be moving the rook here or here. But I'll do for the arrows for now. So it's an interesting situation. Um, if we're caring about the clock, the clock time is seven minutes and 53 for me and 14 minutes for the opponent, now 13.59. But we're not here watching the clock. We are here trying to improve our game. Doesn't always work, but we trying to utilize the experiences that we've had in the game of chess. Um, we've done like recent studies, recent reviews, and we're trying to apply those um, um, analyses. So it's most it's most definitely key. You can do a review of your game, but not actually take any action on it at that moment in time when you're doing your review and you're looking and going, oh yes, yes, yes. But then you do the same thing in the next game. You're not learning from that. So we got we take ourselves through applying that learning as best possible and trying to utilize all the experiences of chess it might not even be a game that i played but a good game or a quality game that i'd actually witnessed either online or over the board and i can utilize that in my own games oh it's showing they've left the game can you believe it why would you leave the game there's nothing to leave ah <sighs> They might come back on, let's say, 66 seconds. Maybe they've got internet problems or something. Oh, dear me. Well, we'll claim victory on that. Let's have a look at the analysis, see what was happening. Nothing major. Minus 0 0.5. So it's neither here nor there. So they're basically saying going for the knight attack here rather than the bishop coming down. So, yeah, it was an even Stevens position at this moment in time. Oh, dear me. Let's just quickly just flick through. Let's take this off. Let's quick flick through and see if there was any dips or anything like that. Okay, bishop comes down. It looks like it's close to the wire, isn't it? All the way through. Draw, captures. Nothing major. Well, pretty even Stevens, isn't it? Slight advantage-ish. Attacking the bishop, comes back. Doesn't like the knight move. So small potatoes, let's see what it's saying. Rook A to D8. Well, the only thing I would think, if I was um, to do that, it was only of the aspect of the rook X-raying through to the knight, through to the queen type thing. But I don't think... And, uh, in a practical sense, I don't see it, but I see it because it's opposite the queen. That's the only thing I would say. So we brought the knight up. We wanted to get the knight into the game, and that's when they froze out. Okay, disappointing game, that one. Okay, finally got one. Uh, another rapid game. And as usual, just keep it nice and simple. Just pushing through the center. So the opponent's playing fast.
And we like to bring the bishop acting it as a pawn. I know it's frowned upon, but it makes space for us to at least get castled. I'm really taking my time because we're not construed by the clock. We're not working against the clock or anything. That's why we're not showing the clock so we don't get hit up on. Oh, look at the time. Okay, so we could go and castle, but it does have like a two on one situation. If the pawn does take, and then we take, his knight can freely take, and then we lose that situation. So we might. I'm avoiding pushing onto the knight because we seem to be getting into a little bit of trouble pushing the pawn onto the knight because we're not having the proper follow up and we're ending up in a drawn position. So I'm going to take the pawn. And these longer games, I know this is rapid, but it's um, longer than Blitz and Bullet. It does allow you that time to really think about your next move. So obviously castling is going to be our next move because um, that just makes sense. So the expectation is that the bishop is coming out somewhere so that they can go and get castled. And if that doesn't happen, we will then go, oh, they may have lost a bit of a tempo in terms of developing their pieces, especially the king. So we can put a threat on it so the bishop does come out. So there's nothing special at all. It's just a matter of trying to use a bit of common sense. Could bring the bishop out. X reign through, X reign through. Developing pieces. All the while, while I'm thinking, I'm thinking, is there a, is there a more meteor way of getting to the king? We don't have any checks of per se. White square bishop does have a check. Could get rid of the white square bishop. But it's moving that same piece kind of twice and not really developing these pieces. So I think it might be a bit of a nugatory check on the king. So we'll just develop our pieces, get them out, feel happy that we're developing the pieces because we're still in the opening stage. We're looking to see if we can not circumvent the mid, mid stage, but transition smoothly. So now the opening has finished, we're now in the mid game. Everything's safe. Although really, I've got to really rein it back. We still got the knight on the back. So we're still really in opening stage. Let's get this knight on the back. This is why I'm practicing that transition period you know the opening the mid game the end game it's hopefully helping me to understand well what where am i at now so if i did another move not the night move then what i'm doing is breaking my own positional structure and not actually developing properly so i think my next maneuver is basically getting getting the night out Getting the knight out and maybe giving the king some company because I can see that the bishop is going to be jumping here. Hmm. I'll jump in it here. I like the idea of giving the king some company, so I'm going to bring the knight across. Maybe getting it sighted there if the bishop's looking to come here. Which ordinarily they do because it's attacking the queen. Try and, re try and avoid doing that pawn more because it opens up the king. Bishop starts doing some funky business. That gets opened up, puts pressure on. Not saying that that's guaranteed, but it, it does weaken me a bit, I think.
Oh, it's not brought the bishop down. It's brought the queen into the game. It's got it off the back. It's got the queen off the back. So that's kind of... In my head now, I'm thinking, oh, they might have lost a little bit of tempo in terms of keeping the pressure on my pieces because the bishop, I have to think about either moving my queen or, as we said, just bringing the knight here, so doing something I didn't want to do. But this queen move, not expected that at all. So there must be something better for us to be able to do. Give, the, give our king some company. Let's see. So if we move here, get the queen off of the back, so that helps the development in this mid-stage. That seems to make sense to me. If he does then continue with this, we can just attack the, the queen. Or are they looking to come here and attack the pawn? Maybe they're going for that cheap shot. Maybe they are going for that cheap shot. I think we can go continue with the knight moving here, you know. Or do we bring the queen here? If he goes for that cheap shot, well, at least then the knight is not getting going to get hit by the queen. If we go here, he comes down for, and then he's attacking the knight and also attacking the pawn. I suppose the knight can block, can't it? Knight can come here and block. So should we just go with the queen? Try and get across and go for the cheap shot there ourselves? Yeah, okay. I'm going with that. Let's go with that. If they come with that cheap garbage let's go here it's good to talk it's not saying it's guaranteed to work they'll still probably come here we're looking to do this does take probably take with this one because he's gonna have the dark square bishop like we said hitting on the king So we're trying, we're trying to get a presence towards the king area. I'm thinking if this cheap shot thing is going to take place. Only, okay, so they've gone for it. So we could come here. Let's talk it through now that they have actually done it. We could go there. We can move it here. We can attack the queen. Hmm. Go there, pawn takes, that's doubling. Whereas if we go here, then we're attacking the queen. Let's attack the queen. If they take, obviously the bishop takes, so that's pretty straightforward. But always remembering they might be coming for the cheap shot. But if they do do that, don't forget our queen can take, but then their bishop can take. It's going to be on the knight. Then the knight can come here, I suppose. Let's take him. Let's just grab. Right. So mid-game transition to end game. Um, like we mentioned before, once the queens come off the board, um, there's a school of thought that you're in end game. In this particular game here, it's similar type situation where I'm going, no, I'm actually still in the mid game because it's still even Stevens in terms of pieces on the board. Once an advantage has been gained from either one of the sides, 
that will determine then the start of the end game as far as I'm concerned. So if I get like a rook off with a bishop or something, you know, up the exchange, then that's the start of the end game. If the opponent does the same thing to me, it's the start of the end game. Right now we're jostling for position, for advantages to start the end game. And if you notice, while we're talking, this is why it's nice to talk because I'm looking and calculating. There's a pawn that is kind of free from that particular manoeuvre. I half expected them to actually bring the bishop here or to actually move the pawn down. But they didn't do that. So we can take this pawn and just looking at everything, taking this pawn, if the rook does come to attack it, the pawn that's behind it is protected by the bishop. So it is going to be an advantage. So this is the start of the end game on my side. So that slightest of advantages sets the ball rolling. And it usually is only the smallest of details if I'm playing against somebody and they get that one pawn and they play well with their pieces, then you're struggling to find the advantage in the game. And doesn't mean you've lost the game just because you've lost the pawn. Yeah, exactly. So the rook's come into attack. So we can bring the bishop back quite nicely. Just you know, bring it back to where it came from. Baiting a pawn. Could bring it all the way back. But it's blocking these centre pawns here. Or we could attack his bishop. Oh man, they've resigned. What? <sighs> that goes to that explanation of, you know, the smallest of advantages. They're not willing to go through to the end game. That was the start of the end game. Let's have a look at the analysis. I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, it's only one plus one point one. So it's nothing major, but it is an advantage all the same. Like we said, it's the start of the end game process. Ah, oh, dear me. Come on. Gonna have to go in for another one. Crikey. Right, let's um see if we can get a decent game in this one. Damn fly. All right, so as usual, just going to develop the bishop here because this is supported by the knight and the queen. So we can take our time, just nice, easy focus on the game. No focus on the clock, just trying to improve position play keep with the basics, trying to utilise the experiences that we've had throughout the years of playing chess, either over the board, um, online, and even experiences outside of chess, utilising those within the concepts that you've got within, within your own chess game. let's yeah as we do normally just open up the bishop want to get castled as best possible just going for a close down sort of looking situation which you know the head of the snake usually does fall doesn't it so we don't need to worry too much about that let's just develop so that we can get castled if we can And they're going for a fianchetto looking thing. I'm castling. King safety. So this is going to be a slow game from our opponent, it looks like. Looks like they're wanting us to overextend. 
So the head of the snake usually does fall when you've got leaves extended out here like this. So I think because it is advanced up the board, that's my main focal point. How do I get it? Or do I get my knight off the back? Because we're still in the opening phase per se because we've not developed that knight. If we attack this pawn, I suppose we could still attack the pawn because the opponent hasn't closed off their king, so it gives them something to think about. But if they didn't take, and then we did take, and they took, and then the bishop can take, hmm. I think I'm going to plump for just bringing the knight up to close off my opening phase, just to play it safe. I think you could, yeah, yeah. Next thing is I will be attacking this, I think, but then they can defend. But yeah, the head of the snake's got to be attacked or challenged. Nothing's happening here at the minute. This king's not castle, so they'll probably go on castle. Yeah, so using experiences outside of chess as well, as I mentioned earlier, um, can be quite crucial. It could be anything from your work, you know, if you're working in like, um, if you're working in like a management or something like that, you go through like coaching type courses and stuff to how to um, manage people and work with people, etc. It's the same thing with these pieces that you've got on the board. It's that kind of relationship that you have with your pieces what what does it really want to do do we understand its true abilities um can it go there without any support does it need support and do they need to work together as a team so using those types of things in real life sort of um resources uh, you can kind of have a better communication with your pieces so it's not gone and castled at all so Straight away, I'm thinking, it's got to be a loss in tempo here. We've got to be able to do something. I mean, hitting the head of the snake, I suppose. That was our key thing, mentioning the head of the snake. So we're now in, we're mentally in the mid-game stage. The opponent, from their structure, they're still in the opening stage. But you can't, you know, take it, take it with a pinch of salt because some players can play like this without castling and stuff. So I'm actually going to hit the head of the snake. So we're talking about that right from the early part of the game. And we're just trying to be consistent with ourselves and with the mantra that we have, which is the answer to chess. The knights jumped in. I'm not sure. We take, this pawn's going to take, we bring the knight around, attacking the pawn, this bishop comes to defend it, we take this pawn, oh, takes and take. oh, he's going to have to do a lot of supporting, isn't it? Of these pawns, let's see how it works out. Hmm. So I said we're going here. Opportunity to go here, opportunity to go here. Could even come back. I'm going to bring it like we said and see what happens. So now it's attacking two pawns if it takes. Takes, takes, still on this pawn. Let's just take. Opens up the rook. I don't need to think about that too much because this knight is still on this pawn. We did say the bishop is probably going to come and defend. Oh, 
Oh, not the bishop, pawn. Interesting times. Okay. So what's actually happening here? There's no knight coming up. Queen moving. Bishop attacking anything? Nope, that's all covered off. Another head of the snake. Let's close them off. Another head of the snake. Surely that must be... An okay move. There seems... To... Uh, I don't like this diagonal with this bishop on the rook. I don't like that. So I'm going to hang fire on that because it looks like there's some fancy business going on. Bishop coming through here. So do we just move the rook out of the way? Is there any arty business? Bishop stopping the castling. That's not too good though, is it? It just drops there. Push or push to support the pawn. Push to support the pawn. Or do we just move the rook here? Yeah, I don't like that bishop being there. I think we should probably move the rook. That's what I'm going with. It does have this, but we've got time, I think, to maybe try and start pushing up. The lazy Fianchetto bishop, from my years of experience, that's all the good for that diagonal, hitting your rooks if you leave them there. So you just got to move the rook out of the way. Makes sense to me. It's like in that previous game, just basically moving my king out of the way because in the previous game, the bishop had that diagonal towards my king and I didn't move it and I paid the price for it later on in the end game. But that had the queen there, same principle. So there's no guarantees. Yeah, he's using the poor majority against um, our one pawn here. So we can hit the palm if he drops down. We can start hitting his knight. And now they don't, we don't have the threat of the bishop, although the bishop can come and attack. But we can move move the pawn. I think that works for me. Bishop's holding this diagonal quite nicely, so the rook's not coming here. I don't see a problem with that. Hitting the head of the snake on his pawn majority. Don't think he will take, I think he'll push. just to further advance it up the board. And then we have the enticing hitting the head of the snake here, potentially. Yeah, I thought I'd push. So we said we we're probably looking to hit the knight and sort of escalate up. How does that picture look now? Don't really see there being a problem. Let's just push onto it. Because obviously we're celebrating that the bishop doesn't isn't hitting our rook. Um, are we pushing? Or has it not got enough support? No, we push and he takes the pawn, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, all right, so we're not pushing just yet. 
I'm happy taking. Let's simplify now. And the head of the snake, like we said, we need to be getting rid of that. I think we can afford to do that now. So we're not saying anything that we're not planned to do, um, which is good. Keeping it nice and simple, straightforward. It makes sense to me. It's got to make sense to me. That's the whole thing. If there's a fancy tactical maneuver type thing, because I'm not a tactics man, but if I see something and it makes sense to me, then I'm going to go for it. But I'm a simple chess player, casual, simple chess player. Only area of weakness is this area here. Does capture. Something that can attack their piece, which is the knight. So we'll just bring the knight through. And as always, when you listen to the sound of my voice, you know, it sounds like, oh, he's got it all sewn up. He's making it sound really simple. It is not simple. Uh, this I've been playing chess for years, doing this narration thing for years, and I've still not got the hang of it. And... It, it does help with the thought processes, but I genuinely play better when I'm not actually speaking. But just for my own educational purposes and, you know, and if somebody is watching it and they're going, oh, that's a different take on it, I didn't know that, then at least they understand the different take on things. But I in no way have got this sewn up. I'm utilising the answer process that we've been training and practicing on and if you don't know what the answer process is i'll put the link into the description so that at least you can get an idea as to what the answer process pertains to be all right so we don't have a white square bishop anymore What I don't really like is that the bishop has still got this area here. So I'm thinking of just bringing the knight in here because then it's like kind of holding court in that area if the bishop's not going to take. So I'm going to do this because I, I don't really like it having the option of winning a bit of tempo, attacking my rook. Whether it's right or wrong, it, I don't know, but it feels better for me. I'd rather get the, if he wants to take, which is probably not going to, it's going to keep that forever and a day. All right. So we're wanting to get these pawns pushed up. That was our plan. So we could do that and then hit the bishop if he's going to stay there. Knight does have the attack there. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Queen takes, rook takes. That looks a bit messy though, doesn't it? Going this way, same thing. Hmm. We did say we're going to push these up here. It just feels different now. feels like I sh should be able to get away with this knight. Knight attacking the queen. Pawn takes. Queen takes. Rook takes. And at least we're owning the file as king's. I'm going to be off balance. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit, you know. I did say if I see some sort of tactical thing that feels like it's right. Right, okay. One move. Bishop take. I don't think I like going that way, though. This way. Bishop 
Right, so where does the pawn, pawn ends up there? So the bishop takes pawns here. So that's probably better because it's jamming in the king. Bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, rook takes. So how many is that? Don't want to go past anything. One, two, three. That's only a three mover. Improves the position with the pawns growing up. I'm happy to work an end game like that, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. But the opponent doesn't have to take, you know, could just move his queen out of the way. And that totally messes up the calculation, doesn't it? If you're interested in the time, I'm on four minutes and 59. The opponent's on nine minutes and 21. So that's still plenty of time. So we've transitioned through the opening, through to the mid game. And now we're, we've basically planned a type of end game sort of situation, depending on what the opponent does. I can't see that they're not going to take. He might not even take with his queen anyway, so all, it might all just fall to pot. See, I think doing the tactical things, it's it's better if it is nailed on and they are forced to do the moves. They're not forced to take here. They can move the queen out of the way. If the bishop does take and we take with the um, pawn, he's not, okay, take. He's not forced to take with his queen, but the first part has worked. First pass worked, but he looks like he's delaying, so he's not looking to exchange the queen off. I bet he's going to try and be fancy and bring the queen here, attacking the pawn. But if he does that, our queen can put a check on, and it's probably checkmate. Oh, sure. Nice one. Excellent. So we saw it to here and felt comfortable about the end game ish i mean this is a nice position for the pawn oh okay right fair enough so now they've got their attack on we do have a king that can come and protect so we are looking i mean this is nice as well i mean getting the bishop here but because he has a check on Getting the bishop here. King's going to have to do some shuffling. Although he can castle. The pawn's not stopping him from castling. Going to have to bring the king up and support the pawn. Well, that's the fastest castling I've seen for a while. Although it is delayed. And I'm hoping that now because it is delayed. Can we get this bishop here? Or how, shall we get the rook up? Shall we push the pawn? Past pawns want to be pushed in these sort of situations. So I'm going to push. Just going to keep pushing. Oh, he's found a way in. Attack the rook, pawn takes, push the pawn up. Ah, no, because then he's going to get our rook, isn't he? Get the pawn bishop. They're moving a bit quick now, aren't they? Let's move the king across and there's nowhere else to go apart from back, but I don't want to go back. I 
Right, just let me go quiet for a minute now. Focus point is here, here, here. Bishop's having to babysit the pawn. King looks fairly safe now, apart from if he gets a rook hanging on this pawn here. But we've got our rook on this file. Hmm. He's moved himself off the line, but we're always interested in bringing the rook here anyway. going to push and then we can look to get the rook here if we can does he activate his rook now supporting while well, attacking the pawn because if this rook comes up here, man, you can take with this pawn. I was just thinking if we take here, his rook takes. Oh, come on. He loses the situation though, doesn't he? We push. His rook takes. Rook takes. Oh, we'll get his rook. Rook takes, and if he takes there, look at this four, well, x-ray through to the king. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Push. If he doesn't take and he just takes here, he's got no check on our king, we will be able to get a check on his king. So we're going to have to do that. And it's... It's not over, but we know exactly what's going to happen. And there we go. Beautiful. Oh, and we can take. I think I don't think we need to delay anything. Let's have a look at the picture first. Save at the moment. Save at the moment. Just a little check here to get the rook for free. Oh, maybe not. Overconfident. And my time is running out two minutes. So they're going to make me work for it. Well, so we can still get it for free because our rook can come here. The rook can't move. Let's go here. That all seemed to come together quite neatly. That'll be the last game for today. Excellent. And they've resigned. Brilliant. Have a look at the analysis on this one. All right, okay, we're looking for the big dips, any changes, it's going up and down. So we hit the head of the snake, then the knight jumped in, did think that was a little bit strange. So we grabbed, yeah, so I think that was a little bit of a, so we're grabbing the pawns, it's nothing major, I don't think we took a proper advantage of that, because it was higher than that, wasn't it? Okay, now it's 1.7, captured 1.8, and we brought the knight down. Where's it saying it should go? Knight g4. What's it doing up there? I don't know what that means. Why? Why is that such a big, big deal? I don't know. I'd have to break that down. I don't understand that. 
anyway, so they captured, captured. So I understand this pip, this part. Did think they were going to come at the bishop, but obviously they came with the pawn. Opens up space around the king as well. And we definitely didn't want this bishop x raying through. Computer's not happy with that, saying bishop b4, bishop b4. Bishop b4. Oh, all right, okay. Takes. And then we'd get the rook for free. Oh, that's funky. Oh, my God. You know, when you see it, you then go, oh, why didn't I see that? Oh, give me strength. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. So we didn't do that, but we had a rationale for what we were doing. And it's still showing minus 1.7, so that's not too bad. Just for now, anyway. And then we pushed on to the pawn. And we did say they were going to push past. So we can touch on to the knight a little bit. We decided to take... Hitting the head of the snake again. So we're, we're around about the one point something mark, aren't we? So we take and we're attacking the bishop. Decided we wanted to come and block the bishop off from doing its stuff. And then we saw, saw this, and it doesn't like this. I liked it, but it's because it's not forcing. They, they don't have to do anything, you know. Um, let's see what it's saying. So it's saying take, which is fine. Then we take. And this was the part where we are saying they don't really have to. It's not forced. So it's saying queen c2. Bishop f6 attacking the rook. We did mention that. Rook d1 attacking our queen. Queen e7. Uh, yeah, okay. A4, is it A4 it's saying? Because the bishop, can the bishop come here? It's saying C4, so pushing the pawn up. Would it laugh at that? Well, it's not laughing too hard at that. All right, so yeah, it would have been... That would have been a nice end game practice, you know, if they hadn't have taken and the queen had come here, but they did take. And so that gave us the slightest of advantages. But either way, I don't think we would have had that much of a problem dealing with them not actually taking. That would have been probably more interesting to play. So it gave us that slightest of advantages in terms of position on the board. So I felt fairly comfortable. Was shocked with the bishop coming here. I'm like thinking, oh no, x-ray through to the rook and everything. But the king can protect. And now we can start pushing this pawn up. And then obviously just bringing the bishop through, attacking, also protecting the, the king. So now we can move across. Okay, just keep keep pushing. Yeah, didn't know what the rook what the could have probably come here. Let's have a look at what it's saying. Bishop f5, it's saying. What's this? f5. It can't be bishop f5. Rook c1. Yeah, that's what I said, isn't it? Should have been probably blocking this off. Okay, okay, right, yep. Yeah. So that's that. Any other? Because... That looked pretty straightforward now. So that was the mating net in a sense. Interesting game. That's the last game for today. Cheers for now.